For the bypass module, the connections you need to make will be on this 7 pin connector here. And we can go ahead and pull this out. And this is for the bypass module or the immobilizer on the vehicle. And there are 7 wires on here as you can see. So we'll go ahead and open this up so we can get access to the wires. And what you want to do is refer to the installation guide, the wiring diagram for the uh, FL can. And here on the right side, all the lines that are solid are wires you need to hook up. Now when you're looking at the diagram, the wiring and the pinout that's showing you, it's referring to you looking at the connector this way. So the wire's going in, not looking at it at this end. So make sure you match up the wiring color looking at this end and compare it to the diagram that you see right here. So for example, on the second far right, it's a black yellow wire and this one right here, the second one from the right is black yellow. So the pink wire is going to go to the black yellow wire. Go ahead and strip the wire back. Now we'll solder that connection. The next wire we need to connect is going to be the security light and on the vehicle it's going to be the blue orange wire right here. What we'll need to do is cut this wire open and then there'll be two wires connecting from the bypass module onto these two ends here. And the two wires on the bypass module is going to be the white black and white red. And for these two connections I'm going to solder and heat shrink. So the wire that's going to the harness side is going to be the white black wire. And the other wire is going to be the white red wire. The last wire I need to connect is going to be the data wire, which is going to be the red with blue stripe here. And this one we're going to tap. Now we can plug this plug back in here. Now we just clean up a little bit and uh, get some tie wraps and tie everything together. Over here on the fuse box right next to the parking brake uh, there's one more wire that needs to be connected from the bypass module and it's this wire right here and this is the door lock data it tells you that is coming from this connector on the fuse box so I've located that connector so this is the connector on the fuse box so what you want to do is pull that tape back so that you can get access to that wire and the wire you need is going to be the green red wire. So I'm going to tap the orange wire from the bypass module onto that wire. So right there is the connection. I can't really film it because it's such a tight spot. But again, it's uh, stripped back the insulation, solder it, and then wrap it up with tape. 
another connection I need to make is the yellow red wire from the bypass module is your trunk status is a negative trigger and that needs to connect to my remote start alarm system as a light green wire for the trunk status so I'm going to solder that and then heat shrink it. These two connections you see here are for the sliding door the opening and closing of the power sliding door and from the bypass module you have the purple black wire this is for the right side power sliding door and this goes to the remote starter system which is the blue green this is going to be the channel 6 I'm using and this wire is purple yellow and this is for the left side power sliding door it goes to my blue black wire which is uh, channel 5 now which channel you use is up to you but I've chosen to use channel 5 and 6 here and I've soldered these connection and I'm gonna heat shrink it so this time I've connected all the connectors I needed except for the last one which is a power and also the connectors on the bypass module is all connected up including the data cable so I'm gonna power this up now once I power this up on the AudioVox prestige alarm it will start going off so get your remote ready on the bypass module you'll see that the LED is now flashing is ready to be programmed to set to data mode or wire to wire mode so by default it's set to the data mode because it's one flash if I was to press this again it will be two flashes the two flashes tells you that it's in wire mode press it again and it will be data mode when you're ready to save the setting now what you do is hold the button down until it turns a solid green and then let go of it the next step is to program the factory key into this bypass module all you have to do is put the key in the ignition turn it to the on position and you'll see the solid green LED light up for two seconds and that tells you it's programmed now so right now I'm following the install guide instructions on programming some of the features and in this table you'll see that I need to set the TAC input to the data DBI TAC and then I also need the ignition 2 option to be set as the accessory number 2 so that's why I have these two circled right now everything's all hooked up now but before you close everything up make sure you test all the functions so you know everything's working so let's go through a couple of tests that I'm going to do right now first thing I'll do is to arm and disarm the vehicle using both remotes so here I have the two-way on the left and the one-way remote on the right hand side and I'll go ahead and arm it disarm on the two-way remote arm disarm so the way the door lock work is that when you arm the vehicle all the locks will lock at the same time and if you disarm the vehicle then it will unlock the drivers first followed by a second press of the disarm to unlock the rest of the doors so let me arm it right now all the doors are locked now I'm going to press the disarm, driver's side unlock, press it a second time, and now all the doors are unlocked. Make sure you set the shock sensor properly, and if you have it too sensitive, you're going to find that the alarm's going to go off all the time, and you'll be upsetting your neighbors because your alarm is always false alarming. So let me show you what you need to do to set it properly. So first, arm the vehicle and give it about five seconds for the system to initialize and then what you want to do is go to all four corners of your vehicle so in a van you have A pillar 
you have a D pillar at the back and same thing for the other side make a fist, a closed fist with your hand and give it a firm tap on the A pillar right here and you want to see how hard you have to hit it if it's going off just by simply touching it then it's too sensitive and you need to turn down the sensitivity and we can go to the back here say right here I'll give it a tap here now this shock sensor is what they call a dual stage shock sensor what that means is that it will actually sense a light impact compared to a harder impact earlier that short burst of beeps you heard is the warning for the first stage if it senses a much bigger impact the full alarm will go off so let me show you that right now I'll first lightly tap it that's a warning if it senses a harder impact then the full alarm will go off if you find that you need to change the sensitivity go ahead and locate where you install the shock sensor and then get yourself a Phillips screwdriver and there's an adjustment knob right here put your screwdriver on that adjustment knob counterclockwise will reduce the sensitivity and clockwise will increase the sensitivity you will have to exit the car, arm it and test it and then come back in here and make more adjustments until you get it right I've just finished securing all the components behind the dash here I'll try to show it to you, I'm not sure if you can really see it because I've tucked it really high up there but if you see those bundle of wires up top there that's the alarm module and the bypass module is right here behind this panel here now we'll put everything back together With the sliding doors, on the one-way remote, I've programmed channel 5 onto number 1 for the driver's side sliding door. And I've programmed channel 6 to number 2 here for the passenger sliding door. So let me first go ahead and open up the driver's door. And then I'll open up the passenger door. With a two-way remote, I've programmed channel 6 onto the option button here on the side. So if I press this, it'll close the right side sliding door. To close and open the left sliding door with a two-way remote, I'm actually using channel 3 on this remote. And earlier I showed you that my one-way remote uses channel 5. The way I accomplish this is to use two relays. If you press channel 3 button, it will energize its own relay and ground the left sliding door. And if you press channel 5, it has its own relay to also ground that same wire for the left power sliding door. So let me demonstrate that to you. And to turn on channel 3 on this two-way remote, you have to hold this top button on the side more than three seconds. And finally, let me show you the remote start feature. Of course, that's the main reason I got this system installed. And on the two-way remote, what you want to do is press this top button here two times. So let me show you how you would normally use the remote start system so that when you remote start it, you can get into your car and drive off without shutting the vehicle off. I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle up.
Now at this point, with the car started, if it's not armed, you can go ahead and arm it. Or let's say if you went shopping and you came back to your car, go ahead and disarm it. And at this time, you can also open the door if you want, while the engine is still running. So let's get in the car. So as you can see, I still have my key. What you want to do is put the key in the ignition and turn it into the ignition position. And then all you have to do is press your brake pedal. Now the car is running without the remote start. I can put it into gear and start moving. You need to test and make sure that if you press the brake pedal while on remote start, it will shut off the engine. The other thing is that if you pull on the hood release, it will disable the remote start also. So let's first try the brake pedal. I'll remote start it. Now I'll press the brake pedal. Now let's try the hood release. We'll start the car up. I'll go and open the hood. And the remote start shuts off. Well, I hope you found this series of videos to be very informative. And again, I do want to stress that every make, model, and year do differ in the type of connection you need and also the compatibility between the bypass module and the alarm systems. So it can get very complicated, but do your research, uh, do a lot of research, and make sure you understand what needs to be connected, what doesn't. Anyway, so if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.